Making venison sausages pretty much become a yearly ritual around here. So tonight is a night where we are going to take some venison that was harvested earlier in the season and we're going to put it all to sausage. Uh, some also into sausage patties and then others maybe just will wrap as ground meat. So to mix with that we're going to use some pork and this is pork that I brought home from the backyard boucherie adventure that I had last August and you can see a couple videos about that on my channel if you're interested in making uh, salt cured meats from pork and seeing how you would take a pig carcass down into all the little pieces that you might cure it. Uh, and these are all leftovers so this was all stuff that wasn't a charcuterie cut but would be suitable for chopping up. My first friend just arrived with some medicine. So what we're going to do is get it all into one bowl and then we can add the ground venison. So there's actually going to be more pork than venison, which I like because this pork is really fatty so it's going to make a really moist sausage. The venison tends to be really lean so it tends to be a dry sausage on its own. Uh, we'll mix all that together and then play with some spices. All he's good for is getting in trouble. Oh, venison's frozen, so we're going to have to bust that apart and uh, mix it in. So this is the pork here, the light color, venison, the brown color, and we are mixing. All right, so um, this is Meester from Puddle Lake fame, and uh, he was reminiscing about his best favorite ever venison sausage recipe which had black chanterelles so I'm giving up some of my black chanterelles we can crush them in a bowl maybe first yeah okay because they're gonna stay big if we do it like that mm -hmm. some honey and then I'm gonna dig up whatever garlic I have and uh, the garlic's gonna go in too this is gonna be like a gourmet uh, wild sausage kind of a deal <laughs> yeah, yeah taste test <laughs> like, like micro micro and then yeah bigger batch and if there's any left after we try it, then it wasn't very good. So, yeah. Mortar and pestle. Yeah. That's probably a good size. You want some decent chunks in there to get the flavor. Okay. Sibyl? Today, like a fresh day. Yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> Is that your weekend? That's from, that's from, yeah, well, that's been in the freezer since the backyard boucherie in August, right? Oh, and I that stuff. Yeah, yeah. have been waiting on a chance to get at it. So when Autumn said, hey, let's make some sausage, then I thought, oh, I'm going to make myself tackle some of that stuff. Cool. Yeah, look at my bathtub. This is a 60 liter tote. This is more than 60 pounds of pork to grind into sausage. 
This I thought was pork for sausage. And I don't know if it'll show on the camera, but it's actually a pig's head. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what to do with that. So anyway, once this thaws, that'll be another big sausage project. And we're just working on our venison pork sausage tonight. Black trumpet mushrooms. These are like the prize mushrooms on my mushroom shelf. Some money. That was given to me for a talk I did at a high school about wild foods. Is a really nice gift to get. We'll put about that much. Oh yeah. And then the massage. There's some frozen pieces in here still, but when we uh, mix it all, then we'll run it back through the grinder with the sausage nozzle on the end. And it should all get ground down, so even if it is frozen, it'll be frozen in little itty bitty pieces. So before, before we just go ahead and make these sausages, we're going to do a taste test just with a couple of sausage patties. So this one is the one with the honey, the black trumpet mushrooms, a little bit of salt and garlic. And then this one here, does it have it? Pepper, fennel seeds, fennel seeds, pepper, salt, some salt, uh, garlic powder, and Jamaican jerk. I think they're done, eh? I, I think so, yeah. Mm. A little bit longer? I think so. They're pretty raw in the middle there, mm. eh? Cool. Pass me that lid, maybe. I'll uh, just cut them off a bit. That looks cut right through. So that's the Jamaican jerk, and then the, oops, no, I got them backwards. I can see the fennel seeds in this one. So that's the Jamaican jerk and fennel, and then that's the uh, mushroom and honey.
All right, taste test number one. This one is. I want the taste test part. Welcome on over and taste test. Delphine just arrived. Too late to advise us on spices. Well, maybe just in the nick of time. Just the exact time. That's perfect. The taste test. But I brought oh, my apron. It seems too late good. for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to try that one? Yeah. What is it? Um, honey and uh, black chanterelle mushrooms. I think they both need more salt. That definitely needs more salt. Like not a whack. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Some. And this. Jamaican jerk, pepper, garlic powder, fennel seed. Mm. Mm. I like the fennel. They do both need more salt. This one needs this, more salt and garlic. This needs not as much salt as the other one. No, but more. Just a bit. Because it's going to be a sausage too. Salt and salt. I think so. You ready? Wonder Woman! <laughs> Alright, round two. So, a couple of modifications based on different taste bud inputs. Again, here is the wild mushrooms, the honey, the garlic. So we added more salt, more honey. Here is the Jamaican jerk and fennel. Added more salt. Garlic powder. And garlic powder. Nice. Chili flakes. And chili flakes. Oh, and you did put the chili flakes in. Yeah. A few. Alright. Round two. Oh, they even smell better already. And the other one. Alright. Here we go then. Oh, it's still raw in the middle. Okay, jump the dome. It'll be another minute. Let's try this again. Hopefully it's cooked right through. Looks good. One. Two. What are you guys whispering and giggling about? Thank you. Welcome. One, two. Sausage. For you. Tiny sausage. Go away, you rotten child. Tiny sausage. Rotten child. Okay, taste test two after modification. And the verdict from the super taster is. After careful consideration. You can definitely taste the honey more. Yeah. Salt brought up the mushrooms. It could still use a bit of salt. Mm -hmm. More salt. I think they just, can. just a touch. More garlic at least. <coughs> mm. The spice in the other one's nice. On the finish, it's good. Right. More salt and pack it. All right. So there's some previously salted pork sausage and it's been strung on this piece of plastic. And maybe, can you pass me scissors, please, monkey? Yes. You have a monkey that helps in the kitchen, which is really helpful. Thanks. Okay. So, it's actually really helpful if, can you grab a little bit of butter on your finger? This is dry, then the um, casing doesn't really this fit big. well on it. Yeah, that's perfect. So we're going to put a little bit of butter on 
Uh, no. Uh -huh. You already did though. Thanks. Yeah. Two stones. Okay. And then. Cooperating very well. You just need to get more more butter on it. Like yeah. <laughs> grease it up. I there. There pretty much was a one hundred percent chance that you guys were going to start being helpful any second. <laughs> I could feel it in the air. It's like, oh, where's all the helpful comments? I know the pioneers just used to put butter on their lips like lip chop, and then just kind of rub it on. <laughs> that does sound like it would um. Work. Oh, all the HP we had with that man. And this. Daddy, do you think it's a bad one? Will be ready? Uh, I think you should go check on it. Risk it. Wait, I have a feeling like I just caught on to why these guys sold me sausage strung on a piece of plastic like, like this. It's yeah. It's Probably you can just sort of push the plastic through. And then put it. Sort of, monkey. And then pull it. You got it. Uh oh. This is why it's handy on a camera that you can just do like the double speed option. I want to go quadruple here. Quadruple speed? <laughs> is that your vote? Loading, maybe if you want me to sign behind and then just keep loading in. And it tends to push air in, so we mm -hmm. put little air holes. Okay. So we just help control the feed so you get a consistent pressure inside the sausage. Uh, at the end. And at the end when there's like a big coil of them in here then we'll start to pinch them off and twist them up into links. Keep loading. 
so long sausage. You have to eat the whole thing. It looks like it's pooping out sausage. It is. It is. This exactly. Is, this is called the sausage poop, this machine. It looks like a meat snail shell. Daddy, can I please crank the crinkle? No. You can go brush your teeth though. Okay, yeah. that's the uh, basically we got all of it into sausage except for this last bit and whatever is still in the machine. So we'll take that off and Tie a knot in the end, and then I'm going to need the scissors at some point if you don't mind to pass them over. So you figure out how long you want your link, and you pinch it, twist, pinch it, and twist, come back, and wrap that loose end around there. Twist, pull that through, do a twist. What's a good number to have in a package? Four six. or five? Six? Six. So four. Pinch it, twist it. Remember to turn it the opposite way each time. Five and six is the last one here. So then what we're going to do is probably cut it about there. Take out that amount so I have enough to tie. Kind of like tying a balloon, I guess. That wasn't slang. <laughs> no? Yeah? No, we were going to take that bit you squeezed out and fry it up. Yeah, might as well, eh? So there's a package of six sausages. Set that aside. So now this is the end I cut off. I'm going to pinch some of that out so I have enough to tie the end off again. casings today we're just going to do as packages of ground sausage meat and uh, that'll be good. Divvied up and throw it in the freezer. freezer. And that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>